Hey coaches, welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, this week, uh, my theme is going to be organization. I just put out my organizational guide. If you're interested in it, it's got a lot more details. You can go to fbcoachsimpson.com, taking pre-orders, and then I'll be getting the books out as quickly as we can. But inside of that, there's a lot of different things that coaches do to organize their program. And, and that takes place, place at every level. And the more organized you are, generally the smoother things are gonna run. You can't prepare for everything, but you can prepare for a lot of things and get ahead of it. And really the only way you do that is through experience. Um, and so a lot of times these are things I'll adjust and adapt as I've run into a situation where I don't want to have to deal with that again on the next time. So this week I'm gonna be hitting different parts of how to organize and get things set inside of your program. So today I'll be talking about coaches and coaches organization, and then I'll roll through kind of getting your off-season, in-season, getting your calendar set up, different things you want to look at for that. Practice organization, uh, which is something that's big. I could probably do a whole week on that and I may do one later. Uh, and then building a call sheet, kind of organizing your game plan. And then organizing how your game is going to work on the sideline. I've got a lot of these materials available. So if you want you know, just different sheets that maybe are specific to these, you can go to my website. I think they're not very much at all and go download whatever you would like to. At least give you maybe a template as you work to building you know, your own. Today we're gonna to talk about coaches, organizing your coaches. And so inside of this, to me, there's a lot of different things. I'm gonna scoot, stand over here so I can kind of make sure I get it. So uh, to me, uh, as I'm looking to organize my coaches, the first thing we do is we build a manual. And there's lots of different templates you can use for a coach's manual. Uh, to me, um, it needs to match your program, but you need to steal from good coaches. That's how I built mine. Uh, I took different things from different coaches and kind of added it into my own manual. And it, it has grown from me. My coach manual originally uh, was like maybe 12 pages and now it's like 40 pages. And so as I've learned uh, as a coach, I've put more materials inside of that. Inside of that material, the main thing you want to make sure you have, no matter what else you have, is your expectations of your coaches. Uh, what you expect them to do, what's okay, what's not okay. Uh, I've learned a long time ago that you need to spell everything out as if they don't know anything about the coaching world. You'll be blessed at times with guys that you can move through this in two seconds and they understand it, they've been doing it their whole life. But you're also gonna have that first year coach or if you're moving to a new situation where you've gotta reteach a lot of things that you might expect them to know, like be early to coaches meetings, no foul language in front of the players, no all of these things that I would hope every coach would already know. You need to put that in there and go through that with your coaches at least once a year, uh, and, and especially if you're going to a new place all the time, okay? Also, uh, inside of my coaching manual, I'll have our calendar. I'm gonna kinda get to that tomorrow, but we'll have a calendar of our games, our B team games, our junior high games, every game, even if that coach is not involved in that, because I want my guys to be around our program. And we also have kind of a, uh, not kind of, we have a yearly calendar so they'll know what to expect all the way through the year. And so they can plan family vacations, they can plan whatever they need to do. It allows them to plan things. Inside of that is also gonna be their coaching roles. And that's their roles in here. They're gonna have a role on the field, obviously. You could be a DB coach, teams, whatever it's gonna be. My expectations for them on the field. Probably every coach knows this, understands this. And again, I've got these materials if you want to get them on my site, kind of go in more in detail. But uh, I also want to have an off the field role. Something I've learned has been good for me has been to put an off the field role for my coach. Uh, you, you, to me, this year, we have seven coaches on our staff. So I've tried to find seven different areas. Uh, there's more than seven, but at least seven that a coach can kind of be the head coach of his own area. You know, we've got a guy who's helping us with technology. And so I've had let him sit in on all the meetings we've had with all these sideline replays we're looking at. You know, if we're, we're going to be moving away from huddle. You know, so he sat in on the meetings with different groups we're looking at going towards. That's going to ultimately be his call. Now, it comes to me, and I can veto things, but I want that coach to be heavily invested in that and have a huge say in what's going on because he's going to be the one that has delegated that role. And so I've also got different roles with helping our kids get recruited. I've got roles with um, handling our social media, handling our, you know, kind of our gear that the kids enjoy getting, community relations. That's kind of the same guy for us. 
Weight room is a huge one if you don't have a guy already dedicated to that. So there's lots of different off the field roles. One of our guys handles our big projects. You know, we're gonna have a mother-son date night coming up. He's gonna be handling a lot of that. I work with all of these coaches, so I'm heavily involved in this, but it's a way for them to grow as a coach. It's also a way as a head coach to make sure you're delegating and being specific with what's gonna go on. You know, if you try to do it all, none of it gets done well. So teach these guys how to do these things and your program will benefit. Uh, we also have game roles, you know, how we're going to handle in-game. I'm going to do game management later on this week. But basically, it's going to talk about who wears the headsets, who talks to who, who talks to the players, how do we handle when they come off the field, how does halftime look, how do in-game adjustments go, who rotates kids out there. You know, that needs to be spelled out. I learned that the first time I turn around and we're rotating a kid out we hadn't talked about. That was my fault. And so we have these conversations early on. Uh, and then weekends, you know, how are you going to handle your weekend? There's lots of flavors you can do this, but in my mind, this needs to be in that coach's manual of here's our expectations of our breakdown of our opponent. Here's our grading system for our kids. Here's how we're going to handle disciplinary issues that maybe we got to handle and talk about during the weekend and get ready for Monday. Just different things that we're going to do on the weekend. I'm a big believer in working smart and working hard. And if you can organize a lot of this stuff with your coaches, they understand, hey, we're not just meeting to meet. We're not wasting time. We're not coming, we're not reinventing the wheel. We're meeting to get something done. The coaches usually will appreciate that uh, and that you're valuing their time and you're making sure that you're uh, maximizing their ability as well. So first thing we're gonna do in an organization is come up with some kind of coach's manual or a guide. Again, I've got that on my website. There's a hundred other ones you can go to and get, but I'd recommend you come up with one that you use. We use ours in a kind of a Google Doc, and it also goes to our administration. So everyone is on the same page with what's expected out of my coaches, what's expected you know, uh, in all of these different areas, and then they can have, actually have the ability to add. So if a coach picks up an extra duty, and I forget to put it in that coach's manual, they'll put it in there. I would encourage them to do so. Because a lot of times when you go to administration, especially now, hard to add coaches. So you need to show, hey, here's the value of what each coach is doing and why we maybe have a need to add an additional coach. So just kind of a side benefit there. Again, guys, you can go to my website if you want more information on this. I did just put out my uh, organizational guide, which goes is like 140 pages deep into all this kind of stuff, specifically on the offensive side of the ball, but it hits a few of these other things also on my website also. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, tomorrow I'll be going through off-season, kind of getting a calendar set, then working through the rest of it. If you haven't already done so, I appreciate it if you would like this video and subscribe to this channel. Thank you for your time.